Hello and welcome to the Field Journal. I'm Greg Yatman. I'm the guest host today. Uh, Andrew Vanage owns this channel, uh, so I am actually his guest. And today we're going to be talking about uh, an extension of an earlier topic around um, uh, capacity and um, really uh, planning your CBRS network and comparisons between CBRS and Wi-Fi. In this one, we need to talk about something that everyone has dealt with at one time or another, which is quality of service. So how do we get predictable performance and quality of service uh, with CBRS, and how is it the same or any different than Wi-Fi? So with that, let me hand over to the expert. Andrew, it's your show. Thanks, Greg. And so if you're coming from the enterprise or Wi-Fi space, uh, one of the key things uh, or value propositions of looking at private mobile networks with LTE and 5G is really the reliability and the quality of service that this technology can provide. So we want to provide a little bit uh, deeper dive today into some of the QoS aspects of LTE and 5G, and more specifically what Solana does in that in that area as well. And just do a comparison again uh, with Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi 6 and, and what some of those similarities and differences are so that you understand uh, what both can provide. Um, so with that, maybe we'll just jump right in and we'll, we'll start with on the LTE side. And uh, what are the, some of the you know, main points of, of quality of service within an LTE or 5G network? Uh, the first big one is that LTE actually schedules and controls all the traffic going across the network. So the base stations and the radio have a scheduler that controls all the uplink and downlink traffic going to and from clients. So this provides granular controls for the, the network to guarantee time slots and reliable, uh, you know, guaranteed performance to applications so that the clients and the, the servers can transmit uh, that traffic within those uh, the latency constraints of the application. Um, so that's the first major point is the LTE radio scheduler. Uh, the second main point is interference coordination. Uh, that really minimizes the impact of interference in an LTE network. Since uh, base stations coordinate, uh, if they are on the same frequency, they coordinate uh, those transmissions, either downlink or uplink, to make sure they don't have any collisions. So that's a scheduler function as well, but across APs. Uh, third big one is Solona Unique, and that's microslicing. Solona microslicing really enforces granular application performance based on the specific characteristics of an enterprise application. Those may include guaranteed bit rate or throughput, latency, and packet error rate. So if any one of those uh, KPIs or key performance indicators uh, for an application uh, traffic flow are at risk of being impacted, the, uh, the Solana solution can adapt in real time and provide additional resources. That can be airtime for radio scheduling or additional compute resources through our microservices-based uh, software-defined uh, network with Solana Edge and the packet core. So we can provide that dynamic uh, adjustment for those packet flows to make sure that we keep all of the metrics for the application in bounds to meet those SLAs. Uh, fourth, closed loop feedback with the clients is very prevalent in LTE. So uh, clients are uh, continually sending back channel quality indicators uh, to the base station and to the infrastructure to relay back what their RF environment looks like and what needs to be done to maintain performance. And APs and the base stations use adaptive modulation and coding to actually control what modulation clients are using based on those RF characteristics, both again, being seen by the access point of the base station, as well as being relayed back to it from the clients. So that the, the infrastructure can also control the modulation of those clients. Uh, fifth, uh, CBRS isn't a license spectrum. So there's much less uh, technology uh, and devices competing for use on this band. So it's a bit cleaner. So less risk of collisions and interference. Um, and, and finally, fifth, and this gets back to kind of the scheduler, which is the, the, the first point, uh, is that uh, client devices don't necessarily need to be aware of the um, QoS policies that you want to in implement in the network. Since the access point in the base station is scheduling all the traffic, it actually schedules all the uplink traffic. And there's no necessary need for a, a client to have a specific policy pushed to it from a configuration or a management standpoint to understand how to map applications to those QoS policies. And that relieves a big pain point that uh, a lot of enterprises have today with Wi-Fi and managing those clients. Okay, so then let's move over to Wi-Fi 6 right now. And what are some of the comparison points with QoS on a Wi-Fi network? Uh, first and foremost, uh, Wi-Fi 6 does implement OFDMA, but OFDMA is still dependent on distributed contention. So the APs and the clients still have to contend for the medium, get access to transmit. 
And they're doing that um, without knowledge of all the other clients or APs on the same channel. So it's not a, a reliable, guaranteed, uh, consistent access to the medium, especially in a, as congestion goes up. Second, uh, Wi-Fi WMM or uh, Wi-Fi multimedia queues are only statistical prioritization. So congestion can still occur within a WMM queue or across queues, and that can affect reliable performance. Um, that's kind of why we uh, you know, run into some best practices in the Wi-Fi industry where we keep channel utilization, let's say, under 50% for voice traffic when it's present on the network. Um, that's mainly to avoid contention-related problems and congestion-related problems uh, related to that, that architecture uh, choice in the protocol. And that can waste a lot of actual capacity for a Wi-Fi network if you're keeping that much overhead to make sure that the, uh, the devices can reliably transmit on the network. Um, next is external interference is always a concern in un unlicensed spectrum, even in five gigahertz, uh, for instance, from sources of uh, like DFS and, and radar. And, and lastly, collisions can and, and do still occur in Wi-Fi as channel utilization increases um, or from hidden node issues. And this results in high fluctuation and, and variability in the contention window sizing. Um, so that distributed contention window can grow and shrink dynamically for Wi-Fi stations, but it doesn't happen in a, what we call a, a smart manner. Uh, once a, a frame, um, even if it's an aggregated frame, gets successfully transmitted, uh, clients and APs ramp back down their contention window to the default smaller size. And so if you're in a larger uh, area with more client density or more congestion, there's no smart mechanism within Wi-Fi to keep contention windows a little bit larger to handle that, uh, that density in a, in a more predictable fashion. So what you find is those contention windows are continually uh, shrinking and growing every time there is a, a collision or a lot, lack of a acknowledgement of a frame. Um, and so then that leads to systemic problems with, with congestion in a Wi-Fi network. So those are a few points for both LTE and, uh, and Wi-Fi around quality of service. Uh, hopefully if you're in the enterprise space or uh, in the Wi-Fi world today and you're considering looking at LTE and 5G for a private mobile network, uh, this will give you some, some background to understand where it may fit within um, your ecosystem or within some application environments that you have. Um, please stay tuned for future videos on, uh, on this transition from Wi-Fi to LTE if you're in, in that space. And you can always visit us on our website at salona.io forward slash journey to get started, to learn the technology, to see a demo, uh, or, or to even uh, spin up an evaluation or a demo environment for yourself. So Greg, back over to you. Thank you, Andrew. So if predictable performance and guaranteed QoS are important to you, as they should be, uh, CBRS and Salona is, uh, is ready to help you out. So thank you again, Andrew, and thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, share the channel, share the episode, and come back soon. Mm -hmm.